do. Good morning. Good morning. Make yourself at home. Obviously, breakfast is out there. Uh, my name is Ofer Barlev. This is Dan Gordon. Uh, and we we'll want to welcome everyone to our Emerging Entrepreneurs Network, which is something that we came up with uh, recently, which is a way that we can put a bunch of entrepreneurs together and small businesses and have you guys, you know, learn from each other and then also we can also support you and add, you know, additional uh, benefits to your business and add value. Um, so my mission this morning is just to go through a few slides, just a few minutes to introduce our law firm, what we do, who we are, and give you a little bit of kind of like what's coming down the pike. On, on the laws that are going to affect your business in 2020. And then I'm going to hand you guys off to Dan Gordon. He's going to you know, really go into and dive into the sales component, which is a big component of a growing business, obviously. So uh, the who, what, where, when, and how of our business. So we are obviously, you know, Citroen and Deutsch, welcome. You know, Rick in the back, why not thank you for, for hosting. Um, and so just everyone gets to know each other and at least knows, you know, the, just the name and the face and what you do. If you just go around the room just real quick and just say your name and, and your company. And so at least everyone knows who's sitting in here and you can also network with each other. So we'll start Jeff here. Jeff Harrison, I'm a CPA, mostly finance and accounting, and I'm self-employed these days. What's your name? Jeff Garrison. My name is Jack Shane. Uh, my company is Keep Left Recovery. I'm a substance abuse counselor and sober coach. Joshua Shulman, SCI, Shulman Communications Interactive, a virtual reality company teaching public speaking, sales training, and business English, also poker and chess. <laughs> <laughs> Rob McCarty from uh, Team Building VR, we're a virtual reality training company focused on soft skills development and uh, enterprise training. And a Trojan. And a Trojan. And a Trojan tier <laughs> too. Hi, I'm Bobby, Pal Fire Protection. We do fire prevention, safety, and training for uh, businesses when uh, for personal. And we're changing California's fire safety by next year. Mm -hmm. Vivian Eisenstadt, Vivi Therapy, uh, Physical Therapy, uh, Holistic Therapy, Healing Center. Robin Phillips, I'm a lawyer at Phillips Lex. We do intellectual property and business litigation. Howard Kern, I work with the term Dutch, Corporate Security Lawyer. Patrick Henry, USC's Greg Center for Entrepreneurial Studies. Uh, Greg Smart. <laughs> uh, Rich D, commercial real estate broker with Lean Systems. Derek Dawson, D and D Technology Services. I provide uh, IT services, cybersecurity, network infrastructure, and disaster recovery and business continuity. Kim Matthews, serial entrepreneur. Don't even ask me what I do. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> You. Me. I'm Scott Tamkin. Uh, I have been a residential uh, and multifamily uh, real estate agent here on the west side for 20 years and a serial entrepreneur. Uh, come to Rick with a couple ideas. But my main focus so I can pay my kids college tuition and, and eat other than mac and cheese is selling homes and uh, <laughs> so. uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur too, but my name is Jeff Williams and uh, owner of Oat Amola Cookies. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Try. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. Now should try. <clears throat> Joel Drasner. I'm a resilience coach, um, helping people um, see that there's inner peace behind all circumstances without exception. And if it counts for anything, I'm an extension Trojan. I went to extension school. <laughs> okay. uh, as long Neil, as it's not UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Portman, chairman of Portman Company, a developer of media and intellectual property. Cool. Uh, Sean Collins, uh, company name is CoreQuick. Um, best way to describe it is Apple Technology Ecosystem Support. My name is Daniel Brewster. My company is called Each Station. And Sean and I do very similar, unfocused, um, moron, um, high end creative agencies. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for introducing yourself. So, I, so since this is the Who component, um, you all see Rick in the back. Um, Howard is also here, so he is our securities attorney. Uh, David Deutsch is not here today, he's actually in Hawaii, so he's um, <laughs> celebrating. And then uh, Rhonda is our estate planning attorney. Sharona is our intellectual property attorney. And uh, you guys met Howard in the back. So what we focus on here is we have two these really separate specializations. We have the business side and the estate planning side. And really they go hand in hand. Uh, a lot of our clients need both those kinds of services. Um, so my, my goal is just to kind of tell you, well, when clients come to us, they really have either a business plan or they don't have the business plan yet. 
So we help a lot of our clients with some of these main ideas. Some of these, you know, putting a business plan together, how to improve it, how to really make sure it really gets to the market that they are supposed to get to. We put projections together for, for our clients. We help them with compensation, with equity, you know, how many shares, how many membership interests they need to be giving, you know, their, their uh, co-founders. Um, what kind of salaries they need to be paying. Cap tables. We have an amazing support staff. I don't know if you guys were able to, to meet some of our support staff in the back. Amazing paralegals who are just you know on it and they do a terrific work. So we, they put cap tables together for, for our clients and that's what you need. If someone's going to come in and invest in your business, you got to make sure you have the cap tables, everything uh, situated correctly. We put a lot of agreements together. So you're going to have employment agreements so you have to like, also worry about because we do live in California and California is very employee. Uh, you know, back. So they really like are pro employee. And contractor agreements, put all types of different contracts together master services agreements, consultant agreements, uh, vendor agreements. We, we look through hundreds of different kinds of agreements and thousands probably when it comes to, to rake and, and different uh, company agreements. And then intellectual property, um, a very crucial component of, of, of your business is make sure you, you protect your intellectual property. Does everyone know the difference between a trademark and a, and a service mark? What's the difference? So the difference is that, good question, so that's actually, we got Robin over here. You want to tell us the main difference between the trademark and the service mark? <laughs> sure. Um, so a trademark is, is for your business. Um, you can put it on it pretty much uh, regardless of what your business does. But then typically if you produce goods, tangibles, something you sell on the shelf at Walmart, that'll be a trademark. But for your actual services, you'll have what's called a service mark as opposed to a trademark because you can't attach it to a physical good. So when you give a presentation like Office presentation up like there, it might have a service mark in the corner right. saying sit just right up, Just right up here. So, because we are, because this is a service, right? And Merging Entrepreneurs Network, as Dan's going to dive more into, thanks, Robin, um, is actually a service. So that's a service mark. A trademark is actually what your good is. So that's just the main difference. Obviously, you want to, you also want to copyright uh, what you have, and you also want to have uh, a patent if you're a formula or a methodology for what you do. So you want to make sure you're protected. Other USPTO is actually the nationwide uh, company that really enforces all of this. Um, a few more items I want to make sure everyone knows about. It's really tiny, but basically really big laws coming down the pipeline for California businesses are the main difference between an employee and an independent contractor. AB5 is coming down the line. We had a big Supreme Court case in California that really cut, uh, solidified the difference between an employee and an independent contractor. And so as you go along and, and your business becomes more successful and you hire on more workers, you got to make sure that California actually presumes that your new worker is actually an employee. Okay? Unless you prove otherwise, um, that new worker is going to be classified as an employee. And if you misclassify, you can have the Department of Labor, you can have everyone going after you. Nowadays, there are, more, there are civil and criminal violations for, for doing that. Obviously, criminal is more like if you willfully, intentionally misclassify someone. Um, another big area is minimum wage and pay requirements for both founders and employees. So many founders start up and they don't have a lot of money. And they, don't have, they can't really afford to pay. But unfortunately, California doesn't give you a lot of leeway. On the federal level, they give you a lot of leeway as to like whether you should be paying the founder, the co-founder, anything up front because you don't have that much, you know, that many funds anyway. California is a lot more specific, and although many founders cannot afford it, we always tell them what you should do is just give something, give a little bit of a, a salary so that you meet that minimum threshold, and then you can do milestone-based bonuses later on. But we always encourage our founders. We get calls almost every week. Um, to at least pay something so it's, so it's on there. And we can go into more specific. Each one of these areas, by the way, is its own seminar. But this is just a little bit of a kind of tip of the iceberg for you to know that there are a lot of laws that we deal with on a weekly basis that will call us for. And then finally, um, the near and dear to my heart, privacy law. Uh, the California Consumer Privacy Act is starting also January 1st, 2020. Um, it's gonna affect three main types of businesses. One business is if it makes over 25 million. Another business is if it has, if it buys or sells personal information to 50,000 or more individuals, consumers in California. And then lastly, it's the, um, uh, a business that actually buys and sells, that has more than 50% of its revenue comes from buying and selling personal information. So although it may not apply to all the businesses here, it's something that people need to keep in mind. Um, and lastly, I want to make sure that you all know the types of uh, common questions we get um, that people come to us for. So market research, so what problem does your business aim to solve or is solving? And that's something that you always have to keep in the back of your mind. What's, what's an issue that you're really there and people need you for? Well, how are you going to add value to your, to your clients? 
Another is fail to lunch. We have to, people come in here in our offices, they have lunch with us, or they we, you know, meet up for coffee, and they talk to us and they have this great product or a great service. Uh, however, they always seek perfection. Oh, wait, let me add this additional component to it. Let me just you know go off to this additional like market group. And we always tell them, you know, obviously you want to have your business plan together and your projections, your cap table, all those important components in place, but don't be afraid to launch. Okay, and don't you know have kind of go out there because someone's going to come and like really circumvent you and get to that market in front of you. And intellectual property also teaches us that you have to actually be first, first in commerce to, to get that benefit. Uh, finally, maintain your momentum, but do so carefully. So Dan's going to go into a lot of detail on how to get momentum, how to sell better, how to get off to those clients and those consumers that you have. But we're gonna also going to kind of like wheel you in and tell you that you have to do so carefully. Make sure you have everything, all your ducks in a row. And make sure you all strategically choose your management. Rick has been harping on this for years, telling everyone, make sure you know who you partner with. Make sure you know, really know this person. Make sure you choose them well, because that's going to be the make or break of your business. Uh, you want to be diligent in how you pay, as we talked about that, the paying component for employees and founders. Um, and then you also want to be selling without being pushy. And that's where Dan will come in and really dive in and really help us with that. So without further ado, Dan, I'll hand the floor over to you. Thanks, everyone, for being here.